the album is very significant to me and it's, it's great for me to be able to, you know, detail it out. What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker here on Unique Access Entertainment. As always, please hit that subscribe button. It's right down there and it's free. That enables us to keep coming to y'all as often as possible with as many interviews as possible. So please hit that subscribe button, like our content, share it, talk about it, be about it, each one, teach one. We appreciate your support. Speaking of support, if you haven't already, please pick up one of our Unique Access Entertainment shirts in conjunction with the good people at Slangsmith. You can go get it there, slangsmith.com. Now, today for Cover Story, we have the honor and the privilege of being joined by DJ Too Tough. Thank you for coming through, sir. Hey, what's going on, sir? And great to be on the show again. Yes, yes. We're very excited you're here. And for the new album, Behold the Detonator, uh, when I saw the cover, it took me back to Yo Bum Rush to show. So just from the top right off the rip, what made you want to use Yo Bum Rush to show as the inspiration for the cover for Behold the Detonator? So the reason we used um, the likeness from Yo Bum Rush to show was a suggestion from Spit Slam. And, and uh, we placed each person who had something to do with the album as one of the members of, uh, you know, Chuck D's crew on the front of Yo Bum Rush to show. The executioners also used that as well. But the special part about ours is I got a great graffiti artist and a, and a painter named Blazing Asian. And he actually painted that. I have the painting hanging on the, in our living room over top of our sofa. And it's, uh, you know, we did the digital 300 DPI or whatever it was and got it to a digital format that became the album cover. The, you know, going from the right hand side of the album cover, it's L.A. Kid. And then it's Thorough 215, Thoroughbred Bangers from um, O.T. The Reels Click, who did a, a couple of tracks on there, engineered it and all that stuff. Crazy edits. He gave it a new school flavor. The, the third person on there going from the right is uh, Overlord Ice Dog, you know, my my original MC from Tough Crew and his tone love in the middle. Another, you know, Tough Crew pioneer. Then my, my boy, Obvious Bane, who I, who I knew for 25 years, he supplied seven beats to the project. He's, uh, you know, he's a uh, right smack dab in the middle. And then to the left, obviously it's me, you know, stretching my hands out to stop the party, whoever's DJ and, you know, we taking over this junk. And then the hand, the hand where you don't see any face, well, that's my man, DJ Yo-Yo, rest in peace, Anthony Ray. He taught me, you know, on the previous interviews that we did, I spoke about being passed a gift from a person who was only around for a brief season of my life. And he gave me something so extraordinary. I was able to turn a whole career into the, the bits and pieces of information and what he had the ability to teach me. You know, it takes a special talent to, to teach somebody else. And um, I'm just grateful. I wanted to shout him out. His name appears on the back of the album you know, right smack dab in the middle over the skull and crossbones. So the album is very significant to me and it's, it's great for me to be able to, you know, detail it out. Yeah. And the Yo Bum Rush to cover cover itself before we even get to Behold the Detonator. I remember that was one of those early rap covers where it was kind of mysterious because you couldn't really see very well or what was going on with it. So for you, as a DJ, as a rap fan, as a public enemy fan, when you were first seeing <clears throat> the Yo Bum Rush to Show cover, what were you thinking and how and why do you think it works so well with Behold the Detonator? I've done shows with Chuck D previously in my career over the past 25, 30 years. Chuck D's, I remember buying Yo Bum Rush to Show and rushing home to Ice, Ice Dog's crib which was close to the L stop. That's why I say Russian Hall. Uh, this is probably when we were doing Fan Jam, 87, something like that. Um, we were just shocked when we listened to it, you know, because it was so different than what we'd ever heard before. Bomb Squad, the layers of sounds and dope shit on there, James Brown samples and, and, and the scratches from Terminator X or whether it was Johnny Juice or DJ Lord, whoever did the scratches, it was just a masterpiece. You know, and we were we were immediately like mesmerized by Public Enemy. They were like our all time favorites, not to mention that Chuck D had a Raiders satin starter jacket on, you know, on one of the covers. He also had a white one on and a different one. Now I've, I've worn Raiders gear through my entire career. That became kind of like the tough crew, you know, 
gang member theme, Philly, Philly Raiders type shit. Um, to be doing an album executive produced by Chuck D in 2022 after 30 years of ups and downs in the music industry, learning stuff, you know, getting getting burned, taught lessons along the way financially with how to work contractual situations out correctly ahead of time, not letting your passion guide the pen, you know? Early on, we just wanted to sign the contracts. We were excited, we, we, we wanted to be, you know, we wanted to make a record. 30 years later, I see some of the songs that, that we did, namely My Part of Town, appear on Netflix and Young Rock on, uh, on Peacock Network. And it's just, um, I'm just grateful to be here today. The public enemy element is, is, is just like, you know, when the promises come true and, and, and God is blessing you, then Chuck D appears, you know? And you're like, oh shit, I'm definitely blessed. But, but I never imagined in my life, he was always one of my greatest, you know, idols. Just, just as far as uh, fucking being hard, you know, Chuck D was the hardest of the hard fear of a black planet. And again, you know, just to be on Spit Slam, very grateful to be sharing the spotlight with Chuck D. Yeah. So when Spit Slam suggested that Behold the Detonator, you use um, that 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 cover. How did you guys decide to do a, a drawing or a painting rather than a photo? I have four four bust paintings, you know, from the neck up of Ice Dog, LA Kid, Tone Love, and myself sitting in my studio. When we did the last interview, you could see a piece of one of them on the right-hand side. Um, so I got the same artist. I got a lot of, you know, a lot of responses for people that wanted to buy those paintings. I got an offer from South of Beast. They came and took pictures in my storage unit of the, of those items and some other sweaty Raiders hats and sweaty Raiders shirts that I wore at shows. It's been a, it's been a great comeback, you know, for me. And I've had six or seven or eight or nine comebacks along the way. I reached back out to Blazing Asian. I said, I said, the label has an idea where they want to, you know, pay homage to Chuck D and at the same time remake the label from obviously Bum Rush to show. And he got right on it. He asked me to send him pictures of each individual that I wanted to turn the characters on the original album into who was in my clique. I had to send them three different angles of their face and he did his best to, to render their likeness. You know, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with it. He did it in probably a week or less, you know, oil, oil uh -huh. painting three feet by three feet. It's hanging in my living room. So it's a, it's definitely a conversation piece to say the least. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Now, did, have you had the opportunity to talk with Chuck, Chuck D about it? It's himself. I spoke with Chuck D on the It's C Doc Again show a few months ago, but I haven't spoken to him directly. He did pop in, show Rob G, and I believe I'm um, 45 King were on the show. He shouted me out. He shouted 45 King out. You know, I, I just popped it in the comment section. Um, I look forward to, you know, linking up with Chuck D and meeting him in person and discussing some. Uh, I actually got a song on the album called Doberman, and, and I'm pining to have Chuck D come on and, and do the remix, you know, when we drop a second single off of the Behold the Detonator album. Looking forward to it. Fair enough. Well, there it is. So now, you know, Tough Crew has a lot of interesting covers too. And now as you move on, you had your Lost Archives album as well. But now when you move on and you think about your career, where do you think, or what do you think is going to be the significance of the Behold the Detonator cover in your legacy? Well, it pays tribute to the DJ. It also touches on a certain aggressive aspect that comes along inherently with the name Too Tough. You know, throughout my career, Too Tough, that was always a sticking point with whoever was the other toughest dude in the room. You know, if it was a bar, it was even worse. But, you know, there's there's me in real life and then there's Too Tough, you know? So, but that name carries over into other aspects of my life. I think it's gonna, it definitely exemplifies the theme music that is on the album. It's dark. It's it's a scratch scape. We could say a soundscape of beats and 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 scratch phrases from artists that you've probably heard before. Smith and Wesson, Beanie Siegel, ARF, uh, a lot of different bits and pieces that I use. OT the real, Thorough two one five. Uh, Rock him, uh, numerous uh, ultra magnetic MCs, a lot of different tough crew, crown rulers. I use bits and pieces to bring the 
bring the old school back with a with a little bit of a new flavor on the beats there. The way the way Spit Slam worded it was with beats like this, you know, this album doesn't need MCs, and I'm hoping that it really lives up to that potential and everybody you know gets a kick out of the album. It was it's the first album that I did myself where I recorded it from beginning to end. You know, created the ideas in my head. I got seven beats from Alvius Bain, who's one of my best friends. He lives in Kentucky, Lexington, Kentucky. I got a, a few beats from Thorough Two One Five, who's a you know top producer for the Soup Kitchen. We did the beats and songs and the edits and stuff. Well, I, I recorded the scratches and everything in my personal studio, and then we took it there and we we did the final edits and the remixes and the and the mixing. And it was really a great project between, you know, three people, me, Thorough and Obvious. And obviously the label, you know, the label was behind it. This started out as just an offer from Chuck through DJ M-Rock to me in an email asking me to do one song for a compilation album with a few other DJs called Revenge of the DJ, which is still going to come out on Spitzlam. But I think I bombarded them with so much incomplete material because I was a little bit excited, you know, and I had a lot of stuff that I've been saving for quite some time. Um, and they offered me a full project. You know, I was feared up at first. Like I said, I never made a full project, especially using digital equipment. So I use Studio One Four Pro and MPCX, obviously a 1200, you know, turntable. And I, and I got busy and I prayed about it every time before I went up there and made a song. You know, I prayed for inspiration and and. Hey, it worked, you know. I'm satisfied with the final project. I was aiming just for me to be satisfied. I know that if I'm satisfied, it's going to be banging to the rest of the world because I'm a, I'm a vicious judge, you know. Especially when judging myself. But but the back of the album cover, the front is very very significant. But the back also has headlines of times that I made the newspaper because I heard Benny the Butcher say, you know, you ain't famous unless you made the paper once. So I made the paper about seven times. We took the headline clippings and put them onto the back. It's uh, you know it's underneath the, the titles to the songs. So I think the project overall is really well put together. It was a team effort between you know Spit Slam, myself, Chuck, the producers, Daryl and Obvious, and the uh, Blazing Asian. So many people gave me an opportunity to tap into their energy when I didn't really know what song I was going to make. Cause I really did make this whole album on the fly. And um, yeah, it's a dream come true to be honest with you. Who would think that I would be making an album, you know, executive produced by Chuck D banging with this. It's, it's incredible. You know, I'm very thankful to be on the show again. I'm forever gracious, forever running for mayor, kissing babies and all kinds of stuff like that. But it's really great to be on the show. Well, there it is. Well, DJ Too Tough, thanks so much for doing a cover story for Behold the Detonator. If everybody, it's available worldwide now on all the streaming platforms. And so make sure you listen to it, download it, buy it, support it in every way that you can. If you haven't already, Soren Baker, we appreciate your support here on Unique Access. Peace.